Hey everyone, my name is Ali Kanafer and I'm currently a D3 student at the University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry. Um, I just want to take this time real quick to just thank Future DDS for giving me the opportunity to speak to you guys. I know when I was once a pre-dental student, I used to always use these kind of resources to help guide me towards the right path to get to where I am today. Um, so just kind of being put in a position to give back to current pre-dental students is something that I've always wanted to do. And I just, uh, you know, I feel thankful for being put in a position to do so. Um, so originally I'm from Windsor, Ontario, and I actually still live in Windsor, Ontario. Fortunately enough, um, Detroit is right across the border. So it kind of gives me the freedom to kind of commute back and forth between Canada and the U.S. whenever I have um, things such as clinic, courses, or, or even, you know, going out and having some... Uh, you know, fun with classmates and things of that sort. Um, for undergraduate, I also went to um, Detroit for that. Um, I went to Wayne State uh, University where I completed a uh, bachelor's degree in nutrition and food science with a minor in chemistry. Um, the reasoning for that is I didn't want to take the typical biology chemistry route where you kind of get bombarded with a lot of um, heavy bio courses or heavy chemistry courses. So nutrition and food science was nice since that I was able to take the necessary prerequisite courses that was included in the uh, in the uh, sorry nutrition and food science program. But I didn't have to take things such as genetics, evolution, or anything of that sort. So it kind of helped you know balance my GPA a little bit and made me a better applicant overall. Um, as for extracurriculars and things, you know, besides the typical shadowing um, and things of that sort, I was a part of um, this organization, ironically enough, called DDS, which stands for Diverse Dental Society. Um, and they used to host, you know, the typical volunteering events and, you know, things of that sort, giving back to the community and all. Um, but one of the um, volunteering experiences that stood out the most for me was Alternative Spring Break Detroit which is basically aimed to give back to the Detroit community, um, especially the underserved. And it kind of gave people like myself or any other student that wasn't really familiar with the city a glimpse of what it's really like. Uh, so it helped eliminating any biases and stereotype that Detroit had. And it was very rewarding to say the least because we kind of had, uh, we were kind of able to make change in such a short period of time to the people we helped out. And I was also volunteering at a, uh, at a clinic as a, physical uh, therapy or occupational therapy volunteer as well and I did that for about three years so all that mixed with shadowing uh, was my extracurriculars and then um, as for hobbies I would be you know hanging out with friends reading playing basketball um, so those were the things I would do to kind of keep myself sane and uh, focus on the, the, the main goal. So when it comes to my interest in uh, the field of dentistry, I became interested in uh, in doing dental back around sophomore year of high school, um, which was a long time ago, and I was uh, basically fortunate enough to kind of set my mind towards it and not, um, you know, change my mind once undergrad kicked in. The reason why I caught interest in that field was because I knew I didn't see myself doing anything. Um, you know, engineering related or physics or anything that kind of involved math um, or calculations, I stayed away from because I wasn't doing so good in these, um, you know, throughout my kind of school career. But I was doing well in the sciences and I knew that that's kind of something I wanted to do. Um, so when we were in high school, we would do typical like career cruising or um, job finding sites to see based on your skills and likings what uh, field suits you the most and I had dentistry kind of laid out as my number one option um, but that's not when I decided to do it um, I decided to do it once I kind of evaluated my options and I thought that you know doing medicine typical stereotype I thought that we would have to learn about the whole body and because dentistry just involves the mouth and the face that that's all we had to learn about um, had to learn it the hard way. In dental school, you have to learn about the whole body since a lot of things stem from the mouth can lead to a lot of, you know, diseases and issues around the whole body. So that was a big stereotype that I had to, you know, scratch out. But um, when you look at it, schooling purposes and the amount of years you had to do residency and all that stuff, and I took into consideration the social aspect as well. I feel like dentistry just kind of gave me 
um, the opportunity to talk to, to patients at a more uh, deeper level. And then just the more you see them, the more they become family kind of down the road. So just being able to, you know, communicate, um, socialize, and just kind of, you know, still problem solve, um, incorporate art, and just, you know, change the lives of patients and boost, boost their confidence level as well, just through the way, you know, they hold the mirror and see their smile is a big reason why I want to do dentistry. And I'm happy, you know, through shadowing and through all these things that it didn't do nothing but, you know, make me more motivated to get to where I am. So that's kind of uh, the main reason why um, I decided to do dentistry and why I stuck with it. To my approach in studying for the DAT, um, I kind of went in with the fact knowing that it won't be um, an easy process, but if everyone else can do it and everyone that is, um, you know, in dental school took it, then what makes me think that I can't do it myself? So I kind of came in with a positive mindset because having a positive mindset kind of kept me motivated. If I kind of go in, you know, with a negative mindset, then it won't do much but just bring you down and kind of not give you the motivation to study. So keeping a positive energy was a big thing. Um, when it comes to how I studied, I used um, boot camp and I did get the DAT destroyer, but I did not have time to do that. Um, I downloaded Ari's 10-week um, study schedule. And what I did was I took that 10 week schedule and I kind of refined it to um, my study habits and um, the way I kind of saw myself uh, doing best on the DAT. So I turned that 10 week schedule into a 12 week schedule, but it was more of the way I like to study. So I spent three months studying for the DAT in total. Um, and like I said, I used the boot camp and I was hoping that if I finished boot camp early, that I would be able to study for, uh, study for the DAT using DAT Destroyer. But I didn't have time for that. So what I did was I used um, boot camp for everything, even quantitative reasoning. But for quantitative reasoning, because um, I needed a little bit of more help in the math um, kind of aspect, I used Dr. Romano's um, math videos on YouTube. I believe he had a series of, I believe it was like a hundred or so videos. So I kind of went through all of that to kind of help me with my studying. And um, I took the full length and um, kind of section test on DAT bootcamp to see uh, where I stand and how I was doing. But basically, uh, Ari's 10 week schedule was more than enough. And if you do have time supplementing it with um, DAT Destroyer does come a long way and will uh, help you a lot more because uh, DAT Destroyer does give you a lot of hard questions and they're a lot harder than what you'll see on the actual DAT. So if you're able to do that, then you'll be in good hands. But um, tips that I would give you guys to kind of, you know, do well on the DAT is one, take frequent breaks. Um, you don't want to suffer from burnout um, and, you know, tiring yourself out early on in the study schedule. Um, two, make sure you do what I do and it's kind of like, you know, study in a way that, you know, best suits your study habits. And uh, that also ties in with the first tip is to not burn yourself out because of that. So kind of study in the best way possible that, you know, you see yourself excelling on the DAT. And my third tip would be to, you know, closer to the exam day, a day before, to just give yourself a break. Um, don't do any studying, um, no nothing. If anything, just do a little bit of review. Um, that will kind of just help you, you know, help you go into the exam with a fresh mindset without having to worry. So just pack a, pack a nice lunch um, and a few snacks for when you have a break during the DAT and then um, go in and you'll be ready to kill it. So yeah, that's uh, kind of what I got with regards to that. When it comes to my application in general, I believe that my extracurriculars was the one thing that kind of stood out in my application. Um, the way I kind of tailored my application was more so towards Detroit Mercy because I did go to a Detroit school, um, that being Wayne State. So I did attend a lot of events that um, Detroit Mercy hosted, just uh, such as like, you know, student panels or like pre-dental events. Um, and even like this eight week course called Explorations in Dentistry. So I had a lot of uh, 
kind of extracurriculars or things tailored towards that school in particular, which I knew um, that when I was to apply to it, um, that it would kind of help in my favor. And not only that, I did a lot of um, volunteering um, things through Wayne State um, for the Detroit community. Um, so basically my uh, extracurriculars that I attended at Detroit Mercy mixed in with my volunteer experiences through Wayne State um, in the Detroit community, um, I believe that kind of blended in perfectly uh, to catch the attention of not only Detroit Mercy in particular, um, but also other schools because um, a lot of the volunteering things I did was unique um, and it was done, you know, on a consistent basis. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what I feel stood out because I didn't have, um, you know, the highest GPA, neither did I have the highest DAT score. But they do look for a well-rounded applicant. And as long as you show um, a little bit of everything and that you show you're kind of well diverse um, and, you know, outgoing um, and also have, you know, a solid GPA, um, meaning the average and things, and then, you know, you should be OK uh, to go with all that. So now when it comes to interviews, um, so not gonna lie, I did apply a little bit late um, in the schedule. Uh, that's because I took my DAT late. So my application was not processed until um, September, I believe the beginning of September. And I didn't hear back from Detroit Mercy in particular until August and I didn't have my interview until November. So um, that's kind of like, you know, the, uh, the typical schedule. But typically if you had applied in July, which I know people have done that, they would get their uh, interview in like August kind of thing. So the earlier, obviously, is the better. Um, but just with my case, yeah, beginning of September and I interviewed beginning of November, things like that. Um, and then uh, the style of the interview at Detroit Mercy is a little bit more laid back. So it's two faculty and yourself. So it's two on one kind of thing. And it's more of a conversation. So it's definitely a less uh, stressful type of uh, interview process at the school. Um, I've had different schools I've interviewed at that would do like multiple mini interviews or MMIs where it's a little bit more stressful, you know, case based and they want to see how you like problem solve or approach different situations and things of that sort. Um, but yeah, Detroit Mercy was definitely a little bit more laid back. They kind of speak to you about like, you know, your hobbies, what do you enjoy doing, things of that sort. And they also, you know, ask you typical questions like, um, like what do you see yourself doing in dentistry, why dentistry, why the school, things of that sort, but overall laid back. And then um, they had, you know, different things planned out around the day, like an open, uh, you know, like tour. Um, and then just they kind of show you around the sim lab and the school in particular and just open Q and A's, um, speak with the Dean of Admissions, things of that sort. So it's a perfect opportunity to get your name out there um, and, you know, show them how eager you are to become uh, you know, a student of their school. And uh, yeah, and then when I finished uh, coming out of uh, Detroit Mercy, I felt uh, pretty confident. I knew the interview went pretty well, um, left a, a good first impression, which is, you know, the way that it should be. Um, but definitely um, they have you there to not be nervous or stressed. They want to see who you are as an individual, um, not just, you know, an overall potential student kind of thing. So it's definitely a little bit more of a relaxed uh, interview compared to other schools, uh, which made it a lot easier and a lot less, uh, you know, nerve wracking. When it comes to tips for the interview process, the main tip that I have for you guys is, you know, just to impress because uh, you're going into the school, they don't know who you are, you don't know who they are, and you wanna make sure you uh, kind of leave a great first impression because that goes a very long way. So, you know, uh, dress in business attire, um, make sure you get your hair cut. Um, for men, make sure your beard's trimmed down and uh, looking nice and neat. And just make sure, you know, you're looking as sharp as you can be for the interview day. Um, and then when you go into the, uh, when you go into the school, make sure you greet everyone, whether it's a security guard, um, a janitor, anyone that you see around the school because you want to just make sure that, you know, you're, you're polite, you're outgoing and, uh, you know, anyone could become uh, or be your interviewer, um, you know, that day. Um, and then when it comes to the actual interview process, it depends whether you have an MMI interview 
or a just a relaxed you know two-on-one or one-on-one -on -one type of interview so make sure you know you do research on your school mainly the school that you're interviewing at uh, make sure you kind of know it inside out and make sure you come in with questions that you know you're going to ask them at the end just to show that you're um you know interested about the school um questions about like you know it's uh the school in particular uh what the person or like sorry the faculty like or dislike about the school what's their favorite thing about the school um you know how they like the program or what they think you know they can improve on things of that sort just to show your interest and uh you know just do your research uh you can ask students that already attend the school what the interview process is like maybe they can help you out as well you could do um, a few mock interviews as well whether it's with like your siblings um your school advisor some friends um you know those are the main tips uh, so just come prepared um ask around you know instagram nowadays it's easy to find students that are um attending the school so just reach out um, people will be more than happy to help you out with, you know, what their interview process was like and uh, what to look out for. And yeah, just practice, practice, practice. And then if you do all that, you should be in good shape. So now when it comes to the application process, um, like I said, I did apply a little bit later in the cycle around October and I applied to 11 schools. And with my situation being a Canadian, I applied to mainly schools that accepted Canadian students. So if there was a school that didn't accept any international students, let alone Canadian students as well, I kind of backed off from there because I realized that my chances of getting into those schools was pretty slim. Um, so that's kind of like, you know, I did some research uh, prior to applying just to kind of see where schools were Canadian friendly. Um, so I did apply, like I said, to 11 schools. And um, what makes Detroit Mercy um, more kind of appealing to me compared to other schools um, was that I knew, uh, you know, while I was applying to Detroit Mercy that they accepted a lot of Canadian students. So I knew that I had a higher chance getting into that school compared to other schools in particular. And I kind of, you know, I had my mindset on that. Um, all my volunteering, all my, you know, extracurriculars, like, going to the pre dental events hosted by them, um, going to like student panels hosted by them and things like that. Uh, I went to all that because I knew that that was going to be my first choice. Being from across the border, um, you know, going to Detroit Mercy helped me, you know, stay at home, be close to family and friends and, you know, just kind of commute back and forth without having to go the distance. So um, all that kind of mixed together um, made it more appealing to me. And I know that, um, you know, the foundation that Detroit Mercy has and its, uh, you know, clinical expertise was also uh, very appealing to me, which was another reason why I want to go there. And just, you know, the Detroit lifestyle was nice. I got used to it while I was at, uh, you know, undergraduate at Wayne State. And I know they have, um, with respect to Detroit Mercy, they have a lot of, um, you know, big organizations such as ASDA and SNDA that they're very involved with. Um, so... All that kind of mixed together kind of made Detroit Mercy kind of like set in stone as my option. And, you know, thankfully it all worked out, but that's kind of like, you know, uh, my thought process as to which school I should choose, why I should choose it, and, uh, you know, why it was the perfect option for me. For what my life was like as I transitioned from uh, being a pre-dent to a dental student, um, it was overwhelming just because before I got into dental school, I was used to the typical, you know, 15, 16 hour credit hour uh, load per semester. However, once you get into dental school, you have to get used to, you know, taking anywhere uh, between 20, 21 to like 23, 24 credit hours per semester. So it was definitely a adjustment period of about three to four weeks before I actually got into like the groove of things but it is doable. You do feel like you have imposter syndrome as time goes by just because, you know, it is a lot to take in and, you know, you just feels like work piles up on top of another. But if you just put into your mind that, you know, there's more people um, going through it um, and not just yourself, you know, you have many classmates that are going through the same process. You have um, people across the nation that are going through the same process as well. So just kind of put yourself, um, you know, in that kind of scope 
and it kind of ends up making you feel better so imposter syndrome is a is a real thing but you just uh you shouldn't let it get to you um as for things that can seem difficult um you know like i said things tend to pile up on top of another so making time um you know to attend courses um making study notes while also having time you know to um hang out outside of school is a hard thing to manage but like i said there is an adjustment period um i would definitely find a group of friends um maybe about four to five a group of friends that you can kind of study with and help uh make notes for courses that's kind of what i do and it kind of helps me stay on top of things so instead of you know look uh watching x amount of uh you know lectures um per week i kind of cut that to a smaller amount and we kind of delegate you know the requirements or the tasks uh, across like the groups and uh they just kind of you know make the notes um for whatever uh lectures needed and then when the time comes for midterms the notes are already ready so we just kind of just study it and go from there and uh, i try to at least once a week take um you know some time off to just go out have some fun or just you know some like me time just for the sake of wellness and things like that cuz you do tend to burn out pretty quickly in dental school just because the workload is a lot so just taking you know some time off to just um you know relax and uh, do what you like to do is definitely needed because um like i said things tend to add up and if you don't do that then you could um lead to burnout so so uh, what life is like for a typical um first year dental student for me um being first year this was back in uh, august of 2020 and as we all know um the pandemic uh started in march so um corona was still you know kind of fresh and uh, nobody knew much about it so um majority of our courses was online besides uh simlab so we only came to 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 school when we had anything like hands on related to do and um what our typical day was like so every day at 7:30 we used to have online lectures that were available for us to uh, to watch over and depending on when your group was scheduled um so basically two groups a day would go to simlab um either in the morning or in the afternoon and this was you know could be anywhere from monday uh tuesday wednesday or thursday and um depending on when it was morning or afternoon um so say you went in the morning the afternoon um you know would be kind of free for uh additional lectures and uh lectures that we would have would be like you know some uh something like biomed um additional sim lab lectures uh gross anatomy we can have gross anatomy lab as well and uh we also took ipe which is interprofessional uh, experiences courses on like ethics and uh you know just how to approach different situations in the dental field as well as um evidence based dentistry so they were kind of scattered out throughout the week um friday was kind of open for uh mainly just lectures in the morning and then in the afternoon if we had any additional um hands on things to do that is uh clinic related it would be done during that time but yeah, uh for the majority of the uh curriculum especially in the first year it was very heavily geared towards uh biomed and uh simulation lab that made about uh 50 to 70% of our credit hours was just those two and um yeah so they kind of go heavy on that and then like i said your gross anatomy gross anatomy lab evidence based dentistry and ipe um so that's kind of how it is you just go basically to sim lab and uh watch lectures and then kind of get used to weekly exams in the first year especially uh with my case at detroit mercy and then um yeah that's how it is uh in uh, year 1 What makes me most excited about going to my school is mainly the the people that you get to meet. I do feel like as the years go by in dental school and uh you know as you go forward in your dental school journey, the people that you meet sort of become more like family. Um you know, they become people that you see mostly on a day-to-day -day basis and uh the people that you end up, you know, getting closer to are the people that you go out with, you have fun with and um you know, when it comes to studying, you study with as well. 
Um, so the people that I got to meet at school is basically the, the biggest thing. And being in Detroit, um, there's a lot of options, whether, you know, it's going out to eat, um, having fun, the nightlife on the weekends, or, uh, you know, even just finding a simple coffee shop to study in. Um, so that's mainly the one of the biggest reasons. And then just, uh, you know, being in Canada uh, and, you know, still living at, uh, at home is the main uh, thing as well. So I'm basically uh, close to my support system, which is my friends and family. So um, kind of get the best, best of both worlds, staying in Canada while also going into school in Detroit. And um, that's the main reason that uh, is what kind of makes me excited about going to Detroit Mercy. So my biggest advice for pre-dental students is that, uh, you know, it's easier said than done, but make sure you take things one step at a time. Uh, I know it may be overwhelming sometimes to think about the application process as a whole, such as the DAT, um, you know, your personal statement, your letters of recommendation, applying to schools, uh, shadowing and all that. Um, but if you take things one step at a time, you know, focus mainly on like your shadowing, for example, and then uh, look for volunteering and then you can start your personal process, uh, start your personal statement um, early and things like that. Um, promise you all things will work out. You know, if you prepare ahead of time, everything kind of becomes more organized and easier to kind of bear with and things like that. Um, you know what they say, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So if you treat it like a sprint, then you end up burning yourself out early and it just doesn't end up working out. So make sure you take things um, one step at a time. You know, use your advisors uh, to your advantage. Um, I know uh, I use my advisor a lot and she kind of helped me get to where I am today. So they're kind of there to help you out. Um, they're there to answer all your questions you may have. Um, you can reach out to your faculty ahead of time if you want a, you know, a letter of recommendation. Um, that's kind of what I did. Even if you get a bad grade in one of your courses, um, I got a C plus in my Orgo 1 course. And I still ask my uh, faculty for, for a letter of recommendation from uh, for one of my sciences because um, I went to his office hours a lot. Uh, I communicated with him on a daily basis and he knew who I was as a student. And um, I was doing well for the most part in his class up until the final. So um, I kind of used him to my advantage because I knew that he would be able to represent me well. And um, yeah, so, you know, you got to you got to pick what works out best for you, even if it comes out to that point. Um, getting a bad grade shouldn't be scaring you in one of the courses because you can use it to your advantage, just like uh, how I said it could help you out. And um, yeah, you know, just take it step by step and eventually it all works out. All right, guys. Uh, so that's basically it for me. Um, I hope that, you know, the information that I provided to you was even a slight bit helpful and uh, that you can use it to your advantage and hopefully uh, make yourself stand out more during the application process or even throughout your undergraduate journey as a pre-dental student. Um, I know, you know, being a pre-dental student can be a little stressful, but trust me, it all pays off at the end and your hard work will get you in. Um, you know, even watching these uh, videos, uh, for example, is a step in the right direction. And, you know, as long as you follow the advice um, you see your advisors on a frequent basis or, you know, you keep, uh, you know, in contact with even a, a working dentist or a dental student, um, anything, you know, that can kind of give you information or help, um, towards the right direction into getting in, um, is a good thing. And yeah, if you have any questions, you know, you can always feel free to reach out to me. Um, my Instagram name is, um, Ali Kanafer, so A L uh, double I um, K H A N A F E R. Um, you know, you can shoot me a message, do whatever, and then I'll be always happy to help out. And um, yeah, besides that, best of luck on your dental school journey. And I just want to thank Future DDS again for featuring me on this. And yeah, like I said, any questions, reach out, and uh, we'll see you next time.